Afternoon, Matanistas. I haven't been to a home league game for a while, so I'm going to put that right today. City, on the other hand, have drawn two of their last league games. Quite exciting match at Chelsea, bit of a bore fest at home to Liverpool, but it's about time we started winning again. So join me for today's match day vlog of City at home to Tottenham. They're usually thrillers, these games are. Anyway, I'm outside one of my favourite watering holes pre-match, the Northern Monk Refectory. Not much time for food, it might just have to be a liquid lunch today, but I'll see if their kitchen's open and they can serve me. That is a really nice pint to get my juices going before the game, and it's cracking value at 350. I don't know whether they're doing a promotion on their casks or not, but long may those prices continue. Well, I did indeed manage to get a food order and I'm going to have to eat it really quickly as you can probably tell by the fact that I know the team news. But before we get on to that, the beer, it's an OFS West Coast Pale Ale. Not had it before but it's nice, it's a fruity little number. Not particularly sweet or anything like that but you can taste the citrus and the hops which is all you need from a great pale ale. And today's results are actually going our way. I mean, there are still a few minutes to be played, but Liverpool are losing, Villa are losing, although I don't see them as a long-term title rival. But everything helps, and Arsenal winning yesterday, well, they scraped home not the best result, but I think today we could put out a statement against a Tottenham side which, in my opinion, is a little bit on the weak side. They've got a lot of injuries. They've got a 1-11 to that have started games before, so they're experienced, but the bench looks very thin for them. Anyway, on to City's lineup. and after dropping to the bench for the Leipzig game on Tuesday, Edison starts again. We have at the back Kyle Walker. We've got Manuel Akanji obviously shifting into midfield. Hopefully he's becoming more and more accustomed to that role, although I believe Johnny Stones, who's on the bench, isn't far off a start. DS and Gradiel make up the back four. They played in midweek as well. We have the irreplaceable Rodri. We have Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden and Julian Alvarez starting behind Erling Haaland. But the most exciting news is that Jeremy Doku starts on the wing. I can't see anything other than an exciting game when he starts. No, I don't always like to predict scores. If I had to, I'd go for City to win this 1-3-1. One, one. And I feel, Matanistas, that the Tottenham high line could get absolutely raped blind by Jeremy Doku today. Right, the food's arrived, down to the table, and I've ordered something I almost never ever order. It was a case of needs must, but I've come in here for a drink so many times, it's a good chance to see how well they cook. And I've gone for the lasagna loaded fries. Apparently lasagna's their speciality here. Never know you could make a dish with lasagna and, lo and fries on the bottom, but let's have a look. Well, the lasagna is pretty tasty. Okay, maybe for a restaurant I'd want something better, but it's quite cheesy, which I like. And for a pub, it's actually pretty good. Time for the fries now. Yeah, pretty good fries as well. Cost nine quid, slightly expensive for this sort of thing, but as it's doing the job, I'm not complaining. Anyway, I really have to eat this quickly and head off to the stadium. I'll see you there, Matanistas. And yes, so late I am, I'm having to go 
in a taxi to the ground. That's the penalty for me having rather a heavy weekend. And as well, unfortunately, the other games didn't quite go the way we hoped. Some uh, late goals to provide a win to Liverpool and a draw, I think, for Villa. Anyway, the most important thing is that we win today. Come on, City. Well, I was about to say City had started brightly, but we got done on the counter. It happens a lot against Tottenham. Doku tried to run back, and maybe he could have committed a foul and taken a yellow, or maybe he was the last man. I don't know, but this is a bad start. And don't forget, that goal came from a City corner. Great free kick whipped in by Alvarez. Thought three men over the ball was possibly a bit too many. Not even sure who that went in off. Neither is the stadium announcer. Might be an own goal. who kept his cool, took his time, slotted it in, 2-1 City. I would have put a bit of money on that being a goal. He skied one against Leipzig, is there a divot in the pitch, something wrong with his boots, or was he just off balance? Well, Metanistas, I managed to get my half-time pint. I'm not much of a lager drinker, but the football stadium, Asahi's OK. Anyway, 2-1 to City and another thriller in the making against Tottenham. After four or five minutes, it looked as if City were petting them in well, holding them back, stopping them from getting out. And then from a City corner, a lightning-fast counter-attack led by Son, who is most definitely their danger man. I thought Tottenham were very sharp, very energetic, trying to force turnovers high up the pitch. A bit Klopp-esque, you might say, because they're all ready to flood forward as soon as they get the ball. But I'm not sure those energy levels, given how high they're pressing, having to run back to get into shape and then flooding forward at the hint of a counter-attack, I don't think those energy levels can be kept up for the whole 90 minutes, but hey, I'm not a professional footballer, maybe it is possible. And I think City really do have to be careful with these counters. At the other end, we're looking quite good. The Tottenham defenders, I understand it's not their first choice back foot. They look very wobbly in possession, as does the keeper. Both of City's goals will work well as a result of pressing. I think another serious error in the second half could lead to another City goal there. Erling Haaland, uh, not quite got his shooting boots on, but Phil Foden is having a great game again. Yes, for the first goal, Ton had the uh, dubious honour of scoring at both ends from a delicious free kick from Alvarez. Although, I said at the time, why are three men over the ball? I don't think three is really necessary. Another man in the box for me. But the second goal, some 
beautiful, delicious interplay between the Harlan, Alvarez and Foden and a delicious finish. If we just keep this going, take care with our possession and don't let them get those counter-attacks, I think we'll be all right. Come on, City. I said at half time this was the problem, carelessly giving away possession in bad parts of the field. And here Alvarez tried to play a very extravagant flick onto Haaland, intercepted down the other end, bang, it was a goal. And just after 52 minutes, Docker was called for Grealish. I thought that would have given us more control of possession, but it's not. Seventy-eight in City looking really blunt up front. We need some energy from somewhere. Slightly worried we could even lose this game if we're not careful. Well, the substitution has paid dividends again. Hard work in the middle of the field from Rodri and Rico Lewis to get the ball back. The ball was then thrown it across. I think Haaland was in there to send the ball over to Jack Grealish, who poked the ball into the corner. 3-2 City. Don't let this slip, please. I'm not sure how Ake got out jumped. Again, I have to say, the root of the problem was careless retention of possession in the middle of the field. No, no VAR, on we go. Five minutes of added time left. Foul him! Well, Matanis, this is an exciting game, but not a satisfactory result at all. I'm back at the Piccadilly Tap again. Sorry, the Piccadilly Tap again. Trying a Three Legs Hazy Bitter. I could have gone for the Abnum Citra Pale Ale. I don't know why I didn't go for that, because whilst I like bitter and I like hazy pale ales, I don't like the combination usually. Pleasant beer, just not quite my style. Anyway, back to the football, and there is a lot wrong at City. Far too many goals are being conceded at the moment. The midfield and defence are not gelling. Maybe the reintroduction of Johnny Stones will help, but we looked always in trouble when they counted. There was always a one-on-one -on -one they had on the wings. Going forward, we looked decent as usual, and we should have really scored more goals in the first half. We could have got that two-goal cushion if there'd been some sharper finishing in the first half. But and lucky that you hit the post on the bar a couple of times, but still, there were more than enough chances to put that game to bed.
I do have to give Tottenham credit though, they stuck at it, they played their game. A lot of injuries but they still went for it and it just shows you what a coach Posta Koglu is. In fact his first big job I think was with the Japanese team in the City group, I think Yokohama and Mariners, I'm not quite sure about that, but I know that he is from the City scale. Son Hun Ming is always a constant menace, we never seem to deal with him properly, even now he's without Harry Kane, and although he scored an own goal for City, he scored one and created one. We've got to handle that guy better, we need our fastest defender up against him if we can. And although I'm at the other end and need to review the footage, some suggestion from fans that Edison didn't do a great job for the first goal. But I do remember Jeremy Doku sprinted back, but I guess he's not a defender. I think he got goal side of the attacking Spurs player, but wasn't able to hold him off or get the ball off. And for the second Spurs goal, again, I need to look at the footage. We just looked a bit disorganised, to be honest. Attacking-wise, of course, it was quite good. I would say to any neutral who wanted to come over and see a Premier League fixture, City against Tottenham at the Etihad is reliably exciting. But, again, three points should have been attained by City there. It's two points dropped. Haaland missed a couple of good chances. We had the shots that hit the woodwork, of course. But I think that we got the ball into great positions in the box. And apart from Erling Haaland, some of the players were a bit frightened to shoot. Then, of course, there's the referee, Mr Simon Hooper. What a shocking game he had today. Card happy, trigger happy, and then at the end, when Erling Haaland played Jack Grealish through, Haaland had actually got up from being tripped, put Grealish through, and then he brought the play back. That was a shocking decision. That was Grealish was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And talking of Mr Hooper giving cards out, both Grealish and Rodri are now suspended for a game away at Aston Villa on Wednesday. I don't know how we're going to cope there, particularly without Rodri. Somebody's going to step up to the plate. Maybe Johnny Stones will be fit to play. That will make things a lot better. So I'm going to wrap things up there, but in Easter's. My next game will be away at Villa on Wednesday. That vlog will come out the evening after on the Thursday evening. But until then, as always, please remember to keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Tell your friends about me. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of nothing.